The second game of the day is upon us between Enz and Virtus Pro. And the main question is, which of these two teams can really break into that top six? Of course, we'll ask our uh, our duo freshmen as well that regarding that question. But if we look at the standings and pull them up again, we'll talk about the importance of this game because we said both these teams want to make it into the top six. But as it currently stands, Enz, the new team in Europe League, is above the team that went to SI. Yeah, third place at SI, still being underneath the rookies. Mental. Yeah, that's pretty sick. They have had a rough start in Virtus Pro, and they've also been... I, I think they have had a rough start, but not... If you look at what they are and where they're from, it's not that rough if you actually think about yeah. it. Yeah. I think they've done fairly decent, because a rookie team, should they be this good already? Maybe. M and M was, but I tell you what. Yeah, but but that's another time in, in the yeah, game as is. well. We're looking at very different. I think that the region in itself was weaker at that point. The context of this game is huge though. because yeah. it's not about who wins it. Whoever wins it is just going to be in the mix. Yeah. Whoever loses it is going to be behind the pack, and he's going to have to play and, and play for one of the lower spots in playoffs, most yeah. likely. Yeah. Surely that will add some pressure to these players, mm. and of course yeah. the team has been around for so long and will know how to deal with that pressure. Is Virtus Pro now? We've seen a loss from them yesterday, unfortunately, but they had a pretty decent start to the game. They did. I, I think they, they've had pretty decent spells, I would say, inside of games. I don't yet think they've stuck it together for a whole game. Obviously, they've picked up wins, especially that one against G2 on Clubhouse, but I think for, for Vertus Pro, what we're experiencing right now is something that I've spoke about even a long time ago is the Vertus Pro paradox, which is we, we expect them to do well, and, and then they can have issues. And then yeah. when we expect them to have issues, i.e. with meta or whatever else, they, <laughs> they do, do well. really well. It's They're such a hard team to read, despite being the easiest team to be to read. It's like, it yeah, screws my mind. They, they just do everything the same way. Even now, they haven't really changed up so much what they're doing. Yeah. It's just that they're committing mistakes. And that's something we, I think that's like one of the things we never really used to see from them. It used to be like, okay, we lost because we weren't really up to the meta. Now we're seeing mistakes and that's been the strong point of them. They never made them. Yeah, one of the things with Vertus Pro is, if you look at a top-down perspective of the map and you see them, they are usually very close yeah. proximity. They're like me and Fabian, we're close together, right? At all <laughs> times, can always trade each other out. If Fabian goes down, I can trade him out. And that's how Vertus Pro have always been. The mistakes uh. <laughs> they've been making, the mistakes they've been making is they've yeah. just been getting further and further away, out of camera yeah. shot, away and, from each other. One player making that one mistake on the other side, and then when you kill that guy flanking, which is usually Pasha, you yeah. know exactly what the rest four of them will do, and you just rotate players to shut that down, set up crossfires, and play your basics. I think our visual learners will be very happy with this way that you explain how things are going for Virtus Pro so far. But then talking about their opponents, the team that is in their rookie year. However, yesterday they managed to beat the number one team in Europe League. Yeah, they should be proud of themselves for that victory, but it's not just about them actually beating BDS that they should be happy about. It's that they've actually started finding themselves again. Because I think they put way too much pressure on their own shoulders. Like, okay, we're in the UL, now we need to really perform. Well, they didn't, because they looked very nervous, very afraid, mm -hmm. and in their first game of this, this stage, they just shit the pants. They literally just yeah. sat and did nothing, and they were nothing like themselves. And then slowly but surely, we've been seeing them taking step by step by step, and yesterday, they put the big boy pants on. They've had some very, very obvious problems, right? I think, you know, there's the operator lineup, the yeah. utility usage, maybe trying to get a bit too lost in the sauce and a bit too technical with it all when what worked them well was keeping it simple previously. We'll talk about something that we saw specifically from ENDS yesterday. On their attacks, that rush was absolutely amazing. Yeah, we saw, if we start rolling the clip, you guys will see it as well. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about their confidence and all of the stuff that they've done. They just rushed the snow door. They don't even go into sight because there's going to be three players from BDS watching that door. They push the hallway, get one kill, we get a second kill, just a second. And this is what we're talking about simple. Literally, they're just running through a door, yeah. but because they know what they're doing and they have the confidence and they have the team play, it all clicks. And that's what I asked them to do yesterday was, yeah. I said, keep it simple, stupid. And it was so simple is they spotted the guy in reading. They didn't actually know there was going to be three people no, downstairs. They had no idea. They spotted the guy in reading and they thought, right, let's use a line and let's just run this guy down yeah. and we'll get a bit of space and control some of the map. And it worked out beyond belief. But that, that play there didn't rely on utility. It didn't matter realistically what operator composition came. It was just three people playing an FPS together, playing the numbers advantage. And that's what we want to see yeah. from them going forwards. And, and it's, it's such a simple thing because we all know that BDS will hold that door. There will be one guy in cocktail holding the vertical holes on it. There's going to be one guy on site. Now we saw three guys downstairs, very uncommon. But 
it's still that they played around what BDS were doing because they know those basics. Yeah. They know there will be two guys watching that door. So why not pick the one place where at most they will have one guy looking? It's very uncommon. That is something really exciting that we saw, of course, from Enz. But I wonder on the defense from Virtus Pro, we know that they can be a really strong, I mean, maybe turtle, that really difficult thing to pierce through. How are they going to do that against Virtus Pro then? Yeah, I, th I think with Virtus Pro, it, it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Obviously, we saw in that clip there that they've just sent three people in to try and kill one guy, ended up getting a better return. I think stylistically, it's very difficult to go from playing Virtus Pro, um, uh, from playing BDS yesterday to playing Virtus Pro today, because that's two teams on like opposite ends yep. of the spectrum. BDS play for kills, individuality. Virtus Pro generally, I say not uh, generally, you know, obviously they've made mistakes this season, but it's generally about turtles, it's about team play, and you're facing, usually when you take a gunfight, you're taking a gunfight with three of them as well. Yeah. Um, so for, for Ents, it's a quick turnaround. So I hope they've done the homework. You know, I hope they maybe navigate themselves somewhere else in the maps and really like forget about yesterday in a sense and then just focus on today because it's a completely different opponent, completely different style. And even if Ants makes mistakes in their defenses, and I, I think that they will be more than fine doing so because we, we said it, if you peak versus pro, you usually peak three guys. Right now, they haven't been peaking three guys. It's been like a one and a half because the mistakes that Virtus Pro have been doing. Yep. Usually, if you lost your entry duel, and we spoke about it in the pre-show, the conversion rate, Virtus Pro is one of the teams that if you lose an entry frag to them, usually they just would completely yeah. demolish you because, okay, we want to get a refrag, but we're already there holding that angle, so you, you should probably not peak this. You peak it, you die. Oh, it's a five versus three instead. And then you just kept going like that until Virtus Pro won the round. Now is a perfect time to actually maybe play that way because the gaps that Virtus Pro have been leaving they have been massive. So it might be different stylistically, throw into the mix into that as well, that these two teams haven't played against each other yet. So I'm really curious whether we'll get more of an anxious end or a really aggressive end, but it'll be on Clubhouse. So how is that going to benefit these? Well, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see Clubhouse. And I suppose for Ents, they've gone to Clubhouse, I think, because they want to right some wrongs. Yeah. They've seen Vertus Pro kind of waddle over the line against G2 on Clubhouse. Vertus Pro made a lot of mistakes in that game. Similarly, though, Ents made a lot of mistakes in their game against Team Secret. You know, they had a lot of power operators open on the defense. They will be starting on defense. They had his army open, Fenrir open when they played against Secret. And they were playing Capcan and Oryx and all these other weird and wonderful operators. So I want to see them keep it simple, keep it tight, and then not make mistakes and basically punish Virtus Pro's mistakes. Yeah, they have to punish them. I think the map is one of those classic Virtus Pro maps. We've always spoken about yeah. don't take the Russians to Clubhouse. That saying was there for a reason, but that was a while ago that saying was, because Virtus Pro have not seen that much success on this map, at least lately. Yeah. So, I don't know, I still, I, I always believe in the Russians, I believe experience is king, especially when you go up against rookies that feel like they have something to prove. Yeah, I, I, I think Virtus Pro stands a good chance here. I think you just uh, wrote the headliner for this matchup perfectly well there, explaining what's going to happen, of course, with the experience that Virtus Pro have and the rookies that ends technically still are in this first year of Europe League. We'll call our casters back in for this game. We, of course, welcome back Ollie and Demo together joining us here on the, on the Europe League stage. Now, guys, how are we feeling about this game in regards to predictions? Who's going to take it? Oh, and it's game number two and you're asking for predictions already? Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm glad you didn't ask us for a prediction game one because I don't think either of us would have been able no, to give you one. No, I saved you with that one. But I want to know what we're this one. Demo's as well. No, Demo's a fence there. Demo, you can go first. Uh, I think VP. Look, you, you can't walk away being the third best team in the world and lose to Ents, who are this new rookie team. It can't happen. You can't afford that. I agree. It can't happen, but we all know about things that can't happen. Well, we'll see whether Virtus.pro <laughs> take it or Ents take it. It'll be Clubhouse with you two. Take it away. <laughs> oh, the look on Fabian's face there when he uh, looked over at Fresh. He knows exactly what is coming. Do we know what is coming, though? We have Ents. We have VP. On paper demo, this should be a fairly decided affair, but as we all know, Siege isn't played on paper. And, and yes. the, you know, they've got some growing to do. Of course, and this is, you know, VP who have looked very weak. You know, it's a very weakened bear. I think everyone is, is clear to see that, but there's still a chance for VP. You know, they still have four games left to kind of turn the season around almost. Um, and they still kind of have to miss a play day, whereas VP, they've already had their play day where they missed. Um, so for Ents, you know, they have, well, this is, they have three games left. So for them, they need to try and get up there as best as they can and try and break into some loose, loose higher spots. But I think for, for VP not to finish inside the top six for them, 
it's going to be a really disappointing season, but they need to win here today, especially whenever VP. Uh, I believe they have BDS next week. So... Doesn't get much that, easier. That, that, that's, that's a tough no. game for them as well. Well, it's one extreme to the other, really, isn't it? Yeah. And that's just talking about the the, the, the leaderboard, you know, not, not necessarily the quality of Siege, but... We'll see what this game has in store. You said um, you said a weakened bear demo. Was that like weak and bear, as in like something's bear because it's not got anything in it, or was it weakened and then like the animal bear? Or There's was the it bear in the logo? Or, or is it weak and then bear is in slang for a lot? I don't know. I feel like there's a few ways that could go. Where, in what context would I be saying that's a bear weak? Am well, I am I some rude man? Well, I don't know, but I think bear weak could be like really weak, you know? Yeah. No, I'm a weakened bear because the logo's a bear and that's their mascot is a bear. So it's a weakened bear. It's a weak, it's a weak bear. Well, I'm sure that there is going to be bear excitement inside of this yeah. fixture. Stop the stream. Stop the stream. Come in. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. We're on Clubhouse and are starting off on the defense. They're going to be taking us downstairs. We, of course, glossed over our bands as we kind of often do now, but certainly worth a quick look we have a capital and a ying removed from the attack capital pick rate has soared recently um it's so much utility is the, is the top and bottom of it you've got the secondary heart breach gadget as well with acogs coming back the parrot's a really nice gun to have an acog on um and the ying of course needs no real introduction yeah, exactly. ephemeria yeah. and an azami both removed as well um azami's Life presence despite her sort of nerf um, slash rework in the way that the Kiba barricades work, still warranting a ban here from VP. Yeah, uh, I think it's fairly standard bans, especially whenever it comes to Clubhouse Capital. Yeah, very, very strong uh, with the utility you can have. Really, one of the only operators that is really successful at clearing away an operator who can be situated towards AKs and also very good for clearing away the catwalk if you are dealing with the cash floor attack. So. Yeah, good bands overall. Hence, they do get the defense. Um, VP, they were actually hoping out. to go for a bit of a room clear because I've seen them, they have the demos in the lineup, which is what we've seen them do against um, Secret. Whenever we cast them in that game, they were looking for the room clear, but it looks to me maybe VP have kind of looked into set them and say, yeah, they don't really have that much upstairs. We don't really have to go all in with the room clear. We can just bring more utility operators. They're kind of giving us control off the kind of top floors and we can start working away down there, which as we see, Ents have certainly done that. It is going to be a turtle from them. Run clear, not a bad shout, especially when you're going up against Ents though. And it's maybe something to keep an eye on as the rounds develop. Obviously there is a need to rotate on the basement side, but it's not as necessary as potentially some of the other sites. There's a lot of powerful positions down that you can take inside a church and arsenal. When you start looking towards the other sides, maybe you would look to get a bit more of a roam on. And someone that we want to keep a close eye on today is Nakey. Um, he's one of the highest in terms of entry picks so far inside of the league. I believe he is sitting at plus six tied with Mowgli. Um, he does get himself into a lot of those entry engagements and can quite often find himself in some hot water. He's going to be on the solace here, so he's got a very important job almost at every point during the round, not only for the drone denial, but any sort of utility that is coming through as well. That can be spotted out and any attackers on cameras too for any C4s you might want to get thrown out there. Yeah, certainly uh, the C4 lineups and, and Clubhouse have been very strong as of late. We can see one wall does get tripped, but the other one, though, it will be opened. That's the uh, thing about the ace now, because obviously very strong. You just fire two in each wall. Bandit can either just go for one or go for the other. And honestly, I probably would have preferred them to bandit trip the other wall rather than the one in the middle. Honestly, I think uh, that gives them now a good way into the site and actually get a good plant down behind the box. We've seen an attempted flank. It's going to be a full retake here from Ensis. We've seen three players interrupt from the blue and garage side of things, and they're going to try and retake upon VP. Skies is holding on the side as best as he can. Nako gets caught as he sprints across, and VP have seen all of these players go above, and they've decided to flood the site, but Skies is still trying to hold on for dear life right now. He's being pressured from every which way. A great pre-fire from always. It's a one versus one. Jax is the bottom of main stairs, and he finds it. What on earth is going on? 
VP have seriously blundered right there. Skies did such a great job of holding on inside a church. He was one versus three at a time there. Picks himself up a kill, grabs it down. Sure, he gets traded out, but the diffuser was already down in short. That's the small corridor between the bottom of main stairs and Moto. That's where the diffuser was called. Jax coming down those main stairs knows that. And arguably, there's no better place for the diffuser to be because he knows exactly where the player is going to be coming from. Through that church rotate, through the wall that Ace got open earlier on. Bit of a shaky start there for VP and a very confident start from Entz. That decision to really flank up and start to assist Azox. Azox was getting himself in a bit of hot water inside a garage at the top of Oil Pit. Wonderful to see his team rally around him so quickly there, sprinting themselves up Adam because they recognized that a large focus of the VP players was inside of that church, sorry, inside of that kitchen and main stairs area. I think the, the savior of the round has to be Skies. Skies was by himself, just in church. Everyone has left them. We've seen that retake come in. Attackers if he just the dies there instantly, VP went the round. VP have full control of sight. They know the rumors are above. But the sea Skies pick up kill after kill after kill. 100% it's down to him. The reason they won that is just he got his kills and he stayed alive. Entz, one round to the good now. VP, they are expecting to see uh, pretty much a full sweep of clubhouse at some point. You're likely going to get to every site here, regardless of who wins which round. Now going to aim to get this wall open nice and early here. Something, of course, that they did struggle with a little bit inside of that church. There was a great ability to bandit trick and an ability to bandit trick here. However, no one in position to do so. Azox elsewhere. Rykos. Just trying his look there with the age-old punch hole inside of Run Dirt up. Tunnel. It gives you a nice angle up onto that jacuzzi balcony. But nobody there at the moment. Instead, VP, they're going to be going for a nice office, oh, sorry, nice CCTV across clear. Dan can start to get that wall open and can start to uh, do a little bit of drone work and find out just exactly where these roamers are hiding. Or another bandit door. trick, perhaps. Azox, have you got it? Yes, he has. Great work there from Entz. Again, sloppy play for a VP. Letting the, you know, something as simple as a bandit trick catch you out. Yeah, big issue for VP right now. Uh, you know, the, the desk said Device, that ready. there's just so many mistakes right now in the I'm game changing. of VP and already round number two. That's a big one right from the get go. Especially when that's your second exothermic and you haven't got any more. It's a good job that you've got Jacuzzi open. Um, but still, it's it's a loss nonetheless, and it's going to make construction a little bit more difficult to get in. You're now going to have to focus Lodgy Hatch a little bit more, especially with Naku coming in and picking up an opening pick onto Pasha, and not really looking like he wants to move there, despite getting flashed out. He does have a little bit of support. He's actually maybe going to run up and try and aggress onto this. Will get caught out there by Joystick, just waiting of course, why my magnets, whilst they can still catch the throwables, the throwable will still detonate. That assisting joystick there in getting that refrag. Now they have got Kikuzi open, of course, but right now for VP, it's trying to get in towards construction and ends have just allowed them to do that. And joystick Attackers also just deep straight in towards Logi. Flashbang goes out probably at the wrong time as Rykos has eliminated the teammate behind him. Always falls. Joystick, a C4 from below. Almost took him out, but ends up finding Rykos. Shepard on the breach. Oh, he Attackers gets shot down immediately. A pre-fire, even though he was fully flash. flashed. Jack still gets the kill, and Dan I'm has the defuser in hand. Has to try and jump in. Joystick will try and support him. Will we see them try and stick it, though? Joystick moving deeper and deeper. Main stairs is where Enza fell back onto, and Azox picks up an easy kill. Ents, another clean round for them. VP just grasping at straws there, hoping the Ents would slip up, but Ents not doing so. Ents are playing good siege right now. They're doing what they need to do. It's not perfect, but they're making a good go at it. Nice bandit trick there onto construction wall. It really assists you with keeping hold of that construction. And you could see that VP never occupied construction for a significant amount of time. It was more of a, a passage through. You know, we saw Joystick move through from construction into Logi. Uh, and then the teammate behind him, I can't even remember who it was at this point because Rykos just eliminated him. Well, they never occupied that space and it forced them into logistics, which then it, it forces them a little bit too deep there. And, and you think about Naku on his opening pick, you know, just playing his life inside a cache. It's what he needed to do at that point. They'd got the exothermic charge. They'd rinsed a load of time. There were so many throwables used to try and get rid of him. 
what else is he left to do? He picks himself up a kill, and yeah, he can bow out at that point because he's kind of done his job. Great stuff from Enz in the opening two rounds. They are going to be giving us a full sweep here as we head into their third choice site. Yeah, they get to potentially do a clean sweep against VP. And, you know, for VP to see them just lose rounds by rookie mistakes, it's a massive shocker. Look what this team did at uh, Invite Oli. No one would have expected this. You know, they're, they're obviously you can say, okay, maybe they're not playing at, at as high as a standard. You know, you're on the stage in Brazil, LAN, different environments. Yes, we understand that, but the drop off should not be as drastic as what VP are currently going through. Yeah, it, it seems like there's some real fundamental issue going on there. You mentioned there about, you know, we've already picked up on a couple of the mistakes so far. Um, if they do continue, then it, it you know, just starts to become a bit of a problem. I'm not sure if Joystick knows about Skies here. I imagine that he does. We can hear the Maverick oh, Blowtorch kicking off as well. That's going to be getting the breach dealt with. Not a lot that Joystick can do, really, from that range. He's just sort of got to call it out and see if there's anyone on his team that can come and assist. But look at the bodies that Ents have committed to this. We've got a lot of players downstairs inside a lounge, inside of the top of blue. Tubra, of course, going to slow things down as well. It's not just a wall denial tool. It is very, very cold. And it will affect other things that the attackers and the, the defenders would like to bring. It really holds no bars there. Garage, still a bit of a point of contention here. And it looks as though it's at least going to remain closed for a bit longer. We see another tub just denying one of those secondary heart breach charges. That's going to be the last two brow canister or Zoto canister, if we're going to get correct. Nice. Bashup picks up a kill onto Skies. Great little one two there. A little bit of a Maverick hole open. And immediately Pasha is there with the kill. Yeah, VP uh, have taken, you know, their, their sweet time with getting into towards garage, but it's paid off. They've been able to get kills from it. Uh, and now they can just send the joystick straight up towards the stairs, up towards the rafters. Nako has tried his hand at a jump out, but Shepard is lucky enough not to be in the repel just yet and will catch him out. Rykos, he is caught between a, a rock and a hard place now, and he tries to sprint across, but joystick on shields, shoots him in the side, and he's up all down to his lonesome. In the one versus five, VP can just get in, try and stick the diffuser. Who wants to get their kill? Who wants them? Looks like Joystick is knocking on the door. He's hunting for him, moves across, Shepard shoots him down. The flawless for VP, much better from VP. Well, VP looking a lot more composed there. They were able to spend a little bit more time outside, which goes sort of hand in hand with the site choice from Ents. CCTV and cash, a large part of your focus is going to be on garage. That's accessible from two sides externally. You've got the two double reinforced walls. You've got the single door on the other side. So you don't really need to commit too much to sort of rooting players out of there and gaining a little bit of that control. A large portion of it can be done from the outside. Again, with the breach, you can get the breach open, start to, you know, work those maverick holes, have someone on repel and really start to cut the site in half. So a good job there from VP. But they've got to start doing it on the other side's demo because, you know, two rounds on the attack, it's it's on Clubhouse. It's, it's not going to be enough, you know. There's plenty of ways that you can execute onto Church and Arsenal. There's plenty of ways you can execute onto Gym and Bedroom. Let's see how they approach this time. I don't think that the flank, if it comes through, will be successful again. I think VP should have uh, an eye over toward that and just be conscious that that doesn't happen again. I think uh, VP will be ready for it this time. I mean, the actual structure of VP, you know, the way that they were setting up, you know, it was you know, pretty standard, pretty what you expect to see on Clubhouse basement attacks. But then whenever you see three players rotate up through blue, you know, VP then kind of panicked and they were like, oh, we can just hit site now. But like I mentioned, it was all down the skies in the middle of the bomb site, you know, doing the work. So I think VP, they'll, they'll be ready for, you know, the potential triple man rotate up blue this time. Uh, and honestly, we'll probably try and pressure Blue a little bit more as well. Make sure that you don't really allow, allow Ents to do so. Have I just seen Bandit maybe try and go for a retake upstairs? You know, that's one thing that can happen is whenever all the drum work's being done, you can then just run upstairs midway through the round and hopefully you don't get caught. And then there's a roamer on the loose that VP would have thought is clear. Shepard, I'm going to be upstairs getting some drone work done. 
again, and sort of going with this, we may come back to it, Rome, that they are doing. We've just got players hanging around on staircases at the moment. NaQ and Rykos. If there's a way to do it, this isn't a bad way because there's still an ability to get a trade off potentially. You're not just sending somebody up there on their own, but ends know that they don't need to aggress too hard onto this. And as such, VP are allowed to take a little bit more control. They can start to open some hatches. We've got Joystick looking down the stock hatch into blue and into the bottom there. He does just get a glimpse of the silencer at the end of Cade's TCSG. But there is a little bit more work to be done yet. We've got Vulcan Shields to chew through. We've got a bit of utility to get rid of. And of course, the flooring kitchen to open. Yeah, pretty standard again for VP. Uh, let's just hope that Ents can maybe do something to pull back against that. Because you just cannot allow VP to set up, you know, as free as they like. You need to try and put some form of aggression. Yeah, kill, disrupt it. Seen a player look towards oil pit. Azox was maybe thinking about going for the same play again, but like I mentioned before, I'd be very surprised the VP let that slip. And this time they are going to be sending Dan down the oil pit to maybe try and contest, but actually the door was barricaded to begin with. And Dan, is he going to take the leap? Is he going to jump on down Attackers into oil pit? Doesn't look to be the case. The Joystick, of course, Lewis Graves is, you know, extremely proficient at just clearing out anyone who could be in for the generator. There's two pings for him. That is great information finding from Joystick. Dan can start to move himself down blue now. 20 seconds left to go, so not a load of time here. C4 there, shots out. Dan gonna start to see some value. Joystick as well. Nakey will be there with the all-important trade. Needs to win this gunfight, but no! His attention turned as the plan starts to go down. Rykos, he now dancing inside of the fire. Pasha gonna secure that diffuser. Goes out for a C4, but it isn't successful from the hatch. Shepard finds him. Great execute there. Some real 20-second bloodbath stuff inside a church in Arsenal. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, if Dan is going to let Joystick know that Dan killed him. I wonder if, he, if he's going to let him know that or just, oh, I, someone I, shot you. Yeah, I think that just comes out, you know, maybe maybe over a drink after the game. I don't think that's something that needs to get brought jo up jo now in, in the time saying, I, Oh, I, I'm pretty sure I got shot from behind and Dan's like, no, 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 he didn't yeah. get shot. No one was there. There's no one behind you. Joyce is, there's a player behind me. There's someone behind no, me inside. No, no, no. no, no I no. killed him. I killed him. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah, he's, he's done for. He's done for. It's, uh, yeah, and all along, it was just Dan. To be fair, in the moment, Joystick's, you know, he's not going to sit there and say, don't shoot, is he? He's going to say, shoot through me. You know, really get, get, get the job done. Mm -hmm. um, Joystick had got his one for that round. So uh, by all accounts, had, uh, had achieved his goal. Ents choosing now to take a tactical timeout. Thoughts on this demo? Because nothing's really been going wrong for him so far. It's the first round that no. VP have won. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think um, if you actually look at VP and, you know, the fundamentals of that attack, yeah, it's classic, isn't it, VP? Open up the kitchen. You're looking to plant underneath the kitchen hatch. You bring in a great operator like Grim to help you with that blue. You attack the blue. You have these crossfires set up. You can pinch them from every angle. You know, flashbangs in the mix of that as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a very classical take, but it works really, really well, as the EP have demonstrated. Uh, Ents, you know, the difference is, you know, Ents, the, the first round that they defended that, they went aggro, they went aggressive, they went for that retake going up through blue. This time they sat back and let VP just destroy them. That's the difference. Obviously, you know, the big thing about Ents is what they did yesterday. Beating BDS, no one expected that. Wow, incredible. Yes, we've heard it all before. The thing is with Ents, they went into that game fearless Five they had nothing to, to lose they knew their backs were up against the wall and they just said we're gonna take it to them yeah, we're gonna spawn pick them which they did we're gonna go aggro on them which they did i w i just want to see them do the exact same thing to vp but if they're just gonna sit back and turn into that timid rookie team again vp will eat you for dinner there is no doubt about it to be fair, it's the first time that we've seen VP in position to really get an execute off, really, wasn't it? You know, they've, they've seen success elsewhere, but they've not really got chance to, to have that full execute um, like they did just there in round number four. So it uh, does make sense that, you know, if you're going to be NC, you're going to say, you know, let's take a time out. Let's, let's figure, figure things out a little bit. Maybe play a little bit more aggressive. Let's not be too scared and see how that fares. VP on the flip side, they're bringing some solutions to some of the problems that Ents were posing. Namely, a Maverick 
they are going to uh, not be getting bandit tricks this time. Bandit, it's not going to be entirely worthless. He's still going to, you know, you're forcing the Maverick pick at the end of the day. Um, because obviously attackers have got six picks, so attackers see the Maverick again and go, uh, see the Bandit again and go, yep, yeah, we need a Maverick. But ultimately, those walls are going to be open now. It just depends on Shepard's prioritization and what VP are really valuing here. I mean, Ents are still in the hot seat right now in terms of trying to stay alive. And Nako is in the hottest of all those seats. As he is getting pressured by a lot of different util, part of the wall is open and he does fall and oh, skies! He also goes down. It looks to me the Maverick has snuck in Ollie and found that kill. Well, I say kill, he's still down, but I don't think he's going to be in a position. Never mind, two players have came downstairs to you. save him, Ollie. You don't see that every day. It leaves the site very bare now and Jax has to try and almost bluff that there's four people rather than just the one. Yeah, he needs to puff his chest out there and start making a little bit of noise and a bit of presence. Fortunately for Enz, they are going to be able to rotate back upstairs. But if you look at who's rotated, it are the two, it's the two players that have already used their C4s. Jack still has a C4 and Rykos does below. Azox is going to take down Always and Shepard 2 will fall. Joystick there with a great shot. Assisted, of course, by the mirror window and the C4 from below, which he will eat up nicely. A couple of players now going to try and rotate up these main stairs. We do still still have jacks inside of showers attack, as the attack, stuns go out it's easy. going to be impossible to swing that challenge the, the diffuser are now planted pasha he won't get protected. away with his life but he's done his job here getting that diffuser down and now it's a post plant it looks like a fairly simple one we've got dan outside a gym window he needs to occupy a little bit of space here and try and find himself maybe a kill or maybe just a bit of time joystick he's dug in at the top of main stairs a double jump out which will be unsuccessful and joystick picks his time to strike Great positional sense there from Dan. You know, knows that, hey, there's going to be jump outs coming my way. I'm going to get tucked in behind this bit of wall and just wait for them. They both jump out and it's just a quick free fire. Just jiggle peeking that. So, yeah, great positional sense there from Dan. You know, VP, good opportunity spot, I think, from Joystick. Whenever you know that, hey, there's a lot of guys below, that means that their Logi position is probably going to be foregone, which essentially that's what they did. They just walked in towards Logi. Nobody was really combating that because they were still getting back into sight, still kind of clogged up towards main stairs. As soon as Joystick got that one okay, kill onto the player on the mirror window, this kill right here, he knows they can just walk in and plant for free. You have the guy in the window, it locks down the player in bathroom. There is no other way that they can stop that. I'm pretty sure that Jax did have a C4 though. But I think it got shot or something because it didn't go off. So there wasn't out there for Ents, but the C4 just didn't connect. Well, quite possibly. They brought four C4s to that fight. But uh, as, we, as we commented on, we didn't see any of them really, really hit home. Joystick did take a bit of damage from one, and maybe the Ents player was a bit unlucky with that, but... Vertis Pro, they're going to be very pleased with themselves so far. They take a 3-2 lead right now final round for Ents on the defense. They're going to be going downstairs into Church and Arsenal. And what have they decided to do? Well, they have decided to bring a vigil. Rykos he is rolling the dice here. Hiding himself out inside a strip. Lovely little fly through there to see the breach getting opened into CCTV. Quite a big extension that, don't forget. When you're defending downstairs, an extension up to CCTV is significant, especially reinforcing into Jacuzzi as well. Just start to think about what that does to the reinforcements that are left for the site. Yeah, you do. You start to wonder about, is that the best play that Ents could have went for? I mean, especially, I mean, look, if they get the kills in the room, then yeah, it's going to be worth it. But if they don't, and maybe VP start getting some kills here, then that is where the issues will start to stem from. Both of them will try and get out of dodge as quickly as they can. Jax with a C4 lineup out the window. It goes. Joystick, though, quick on the trigger. Will destroy that C4. So there's still a 5v5 and nearly half of the round already gone. And VP really haven't made it into the building yet. Only they're, they're terrified right now of where these roamers could be. And if you look at what it's cost them, they've paid quite heavily, really. We've seen a boogie used from Ram. Always, of course, playing on the Ram. He does have two left. 
We've seen both exothermic charges used just to clear the roam. And by the way, VP, the roam is still in full effect because Rykos is still inside a strip. So you've got to remember that. You know, you might have thought you, thought you cleared the roam out, but you're not really. It's still kind of there. Now they're going to be able to start getting these hatches open. And you just get the feeling that we're going to see the same sort of 20 second drop coming in again. Thatcher is going to assist the Habana getting the hatch open. But still, time ticking here for VP. And I still don't feel like they know enough information as to what they're going to be dealing with on site. And they certainly don't know that Rykos is still hanging out inside a strip. Yeah, he could be the hero or villain of this dropped. round, depending on what team you support. It can really spoil the party for VP. VP have no idea that he's there. It just, it's just a case of how well can he time it? Is he going to wait for them to drop and then retake kitchen then have the kitchen hatch to eliminate the guys inside of armory? Or will he just try and get one kill and run down the stairs? We don't know what the option is going to be for. VP bombing. will start to approach in towards blue. This joystick has done so many times before. Here comes Rikers though on that big old flank, but the they don't even need him. Attackers. They held VP at bay. Rikers will get that one kill on the flank, but really he did very little Ollie. The rest of it just got their kills. Rykos was AFK and he still got a kill. I'd be furious if I was one of the side players, friends. You've been sat on your hands inside a strip for the whole round. We've been dealing with everything that's coming through. We've been sitting patiently. And he just waltzes down the main stairs and picks himself up one. A flawless round there for Ents. And I think that VP are going to be kicking themselves because they droned almost every single inch of that map apart from one huge really important area um, which is synonymous with roamers strip is used for nothing else than attackers getting into the site into the map quickly and roamers hanging out there that is literally all it is used for and ents and well rykos in particular used it very well indeed a 3-3 split as we switch sides good game good game so far a lot of highs, a lot, lot of lows. Very back and forth. Ten seconds left. BP though, they get the defense. Um, obviously, Ents now. They get to have a go on their uh, attacks. If we look, you know, past kind of what they've done previously in Clubhouse, you look at that game against Secret. They didn't win a single attack against them on Clubhouse. You know, for me, that that's always a bit of a, a warning sign, isn't it? Where you know, you're, you're going back to a map that you have not had the greatest success on on the attack, and they were probably hoping to have a better standpoint inside of defense. But then keep in mind, you know, we're against VP on Clubhouse. You know, this is probably one of their maps, and you've chosen to take them there. Yeah, I think there's, there's got to be a little bit of that expected, like you say. I think for me and Ents, it's, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the way that they try and deal with this roam clear because. VP, they've got the ability to roam if they want to. They've also got the ability to just sit inside of sight and really wait for you to come to them. Already, this seems to be taking quite a long time to sort of get established. We do have a bit of presence upstairs. We've got NAQ. He's going to start to make some holes through just to give him a line of sight onto those main stairs. And to be fair, Azox has got himself to the bottom plat in main as well. So we can start to commit a little bit of drone work from here. So it isn't looking too terrible at the moment for Ents in terms of pacing and speed. That was a main criticism that we had from VP attacking onto this site. They did seem to take their sweet time. And it's all well and good being thorough, but when you look at what you've got to deal with when you get into the site and you start to open up these access points like the hatches, like the floor, and like, you know, pushing down main stairs, you look at what you've got to try and chew through. There's quite a bit to be going out there. wonder if Rykos is able to get in and maybe try and snag any of those maestro cams. It would be a good thing to get as well. You know, we've seen a few times, you know, the, the Brava cams hacking the maestro cameras has resulted in it. And a few comical plays. I think back to, um, you know, the clash in, in the, the cafe from Invite. Oh, I think it was VP who did it, wasn't it? Was it VP if it hacked the camera and killed the clash? So it's it's happened a few times. We've certainly seen it before. But Shepard is keeping a close eye on his cameras, making sure that nobody's hacking him today. At the same time, I mean, dirt is is his kind of area of expertise. He has to look at, but it's not even reinforced. Oh, they've got one. In the, the triple wall one. 
That was a good one to get. Mm -hmm. Obviously denies a lot of info. They're still struggling to get that breach open firmly, but Naku is going to open yeah, things up. An opening pick at the 30-second mark always replies. Basher is going to swing with the shotgun yeah, as well. Level things out into a three versus two yeah, here. Right. Still work to be done, but Pasher is having an absolute field day inside of Moto. Goes for the preemptive C4 just in case. Shepard, he can now jump onto the evil eye camera and start dealing some damage, but it's not going to stop Pasher from falling. Rykos, he's able to swing and pick the camera. Skies is starting to get the plant down. Shepard, does he have the information? We can see red pings in the distance, but the plant is going to be allowed to go down. More importantly, it looks as though both players have been able to get themselves away, tucked inside a moto and tucked just inside a church double there. And they really don't want to give themselves away here. They need to try and play on contact. So as soon as one player starts shooting, the other comes through as well. And there it is. Rykos picking up that final kill. Yeah, great crossfire established there from Ents. I mean, it was all, all came down to blue, wasn't it? That's, that was the player to watch. Being able to get yourself tucked into to that blue and win that fight successfully really determines on who wins and loses that round based on attack and defense. If the attackers get in there, you have that kind of avenue approach. If you can walk into armory and open up that side of things, or you then have all these sight lines in towards church, combo that with the triple wall being opened up. If that triple wall is opened up, there is only one safe position really that... that um, defenders can play in and that's right beside the kind of the, the drinks cabinet if there's a guy in blue that drinks cabinet then just becomes null and void so it completely clears out that entire bomb site just with one player being in there so that's where vp really struggled was just winning that blue fight we talk about it so much but it is it's so important user has been dropped user i thought pasha was going to do it for a moment he was just, he seemed like he was in the flow state, you know. But you can only get so many kills from one location and then, you know, things like luck start to become an increasing factor in your success. VP, I'm going to feel too hard done by losing that first defensive round. It was on the basement, but it is going to be enough of a shock to uh, keep them in rotation, so to speak. And they're actually going to head upstairs to gym bedroom now. I'm going to uh, take Ents any amount of attacker rounds till they start bringing a Maverick of their own. And Naku is going to be on it straight away. One of the more efficient ways that we see Maverick opening up that wall. Sometimes we've seen some honking Mavericks in the past demo. We've seen some Picasso drawings, as we like to call them. Mm -hmm. That was nice and clean. It was. It's good to see. I mean, Maverick at the moment is uh, not not the most exciting operator to play down to the kind of new C4 mechanics where you can open up a wall and somebody will have that C4 lineup ready for you and you're gone. So it's uh, it's an unforgiving rule to be sure, but thankfully this bandit is packing barbed wire rather than the C4. So no issues for the Mav whatsoever. Ends are just looking to open up walls, probe the site, try and figure out the weak points of VP and, and see what they can really start to pressure. A little window play at the moment, and Skies is, oh, almost been taken out by a C4 there, but Pasha just off the mark. I don't know if the flashbang played a, a part in that. I'm sure it probably did. But then slowly but surely making their way across, looking to open up in towards that cache. But knowing VP and the fact that they have mirror windows, they'll probably just fall back into the kind of secondary positions and play those mirror windows. That's the beauty of setting that defense up in layers. It's what we were talking about in our first game of the day. And you can do very similar here on Clubhouse as we were seeing on Skyscraper earlier with BDS. It's uh, it's very capable. Uh, sorry, both maps are very capable of setting up that layered defense. I'm going to see the mirror window pop. So that's going to take out. Oh, it's not going to take out the Selma. The Selma will still go off there. Sometimes, depending on how much of the Selma is over the mirror window, you can't actually uh, remove the whole Changing Selma, backs. but you may as well pop the mirror window nonetheless. It is only ever going to be a crouch through unless Jax commits his final Selma to making it a walkable, vaultable breach. That's Ox potentially looking for a backstab up the main stairs. Two players are going to be situated there, which I mean, not the greatest of things. That means one player can watch the top, one player can watch the bottom. Everyone else from Insta is jumping in with the kills. And here comes Azox. Can he find the backstaff? Oh, he's able to take out one before Dan is there. Dan is Soul Shepherd down the river. 
Always the only player actually in the site and doing work right now of that MP5A cog. Does he know about the players walk right behind him? No, he doesn't. Jax, you have to defuse or get that planted. Dan is below, tries to open up an angle, but he's not going to be able to get anything from it. Now he has to go for that lonely walk up that big, long staircase. A 1v2. Entz can back off now. Cover that diffuser. Good crossfire. One on each end of the corridor. Dan will pull out the deagle. Give him more movement speed. Hopefully he can hit his shots or not. We'll get shot from behind. Shot from behind again. Doesn't know which angle to challenge onto. All Entz can do is sit back and just play their crossfire. Dan sprints across. Oh no! He's been able to kill Jax. He will just immediately go under the diffuser. We need to do the response though from the Maverick. Has to make the play. Has to make the move. But Dan has gone off it. Will try and stick it again, but it just gives Nay now the go ahead to move in and pick up that kill. Oh, it got dicey at the end, but thankfully Entz will come away of around it. Well, they definitely did deserve to win. It's one of the hardest angles to challenge in the game, that in a post plant. When you're a defender rotating up those main stairs, you've got someone on jacuzzi, you've got someone inside a lodgy door. It's one of the worst because they are at direct 90 degrees to 180 degrees apart. You know, you turn one way, it's immediately behind you where the next guy is going to be swinging you from. As soon as I saw Dan cross, I was like, it could be on. You know, he picks up the kill and all, all of a sudden, all it takes is for Nike to fumble there in that, you know, baiting, you know, it's, it's, it's a bait versus a bait, isn't it? Dan's baiting that he's diffusing, Nike's baiting that he's walking toward him and, and all you're hoping for is the clock to do the rest as an attacker. That's really what you're... Uh, you're wishing away the seconds there as uh, as the time does tick but a great round there from n successful in both of their attacks here this is great stuff demo we, we've spoken about Ents as a team that you know needs to show this aggression can't play scared need to show us what they're capable of i feel like they've done that and more in these two attacking rounds and of course they were doing it on the defense prior to that good effort from always has to be said really good effort but uh, yeah, just just too much work for Dan to do, really. I honestly am surprised that he even got away with the first kill. You know, even letting that kill slip, it's risky there for, for Mintz. You know, it puts some hot water where it really shouldn't have gotten that close. Um, look, I, I thought the way that Entz played that, they, they did really well. They opened up all the angles. They put pressure on the windows. You know, whenever you've been able to choke hold two players into the main stairs, you know, that just shows that you've cut off a lot of the stuff that VP were trying to do, where there's two players just stacked up upon each other. You know, the backstab worked well, went into a 2v4, and then it really just should have been that from there. But like I mentioned, Entz just made it very difficult for themselves. But VP right now, look, we said before the game, and, and, and Fresh and Fabian agreed, this has to be a must win for VP. It has to be. You can't walk away doing what they've done this, you know, the, the, the year 2023 going into 2024. It was a great year for VP. You know, really good finishes, being at the events, uh, you know, topping stages here in the EUL. And to see them now not match that again, you're always going to put a question mark. Same way we do it at the G2, same way we do it at the BDS, same way we do it at the Wolves. If you're at the top, you need to stay at the top. And if you don't, people will say, well, why aren't you at the top anymore? That's just, that's life. That's how that works. Yeah. And right and right now for VP, that, that's what they're struggling with, is they're struggling getting back to the top. Absolutely. And this performance is, you know, a testament to that. We've gone from a tactical into a technical. Hence the slightly longer pause here, but we thank you for bearing with us. I believe we'll be getting into the game soon. You've got to look for these things. Details, reflections in players' glasses, glimpses of screens, the skin tone changing color when the screen goes orange or something when it's starting the game. The eye is the window to the soul. They're all indicators that you've got to work with. Well, fortunately, we're back in the game. We haven't, uh, it doesn't seem like we had to have a rehost either, so it just must have been a slight pause there for a player. 5 3, we currently sit. And in the driver's seat right now, attacking downstairs. They have been successful downstairs and they have been successful attacking gym and bedroom. VP haven't opted for a third choice site, they've not opted to go to CCTV and cash. Instead, they feel like they can right some wrongs from the previous defense downstairs. And that wrong or that right is going to be with a roam game. We've got a mute upstairs. We've got a couple of mute jammers placed. We're reinforcing into cash. We've got always playing inside a garage. There's a lot to deal with here, friends. They've, they've got a lot of steps to try and, and get across here. It's not as just simple as opening a, a wall and getting the drone in. You've got players up there now that are going to cause you a bit of a headache. 
See how well Ents can deal with the roam game. Uh, VP want to put up against them. Setting recharge. I think uh, right now for VP, it's just trying to get that open engagement, especially if you're dealing with the basement. If you can pick off an attacker right from the get go, you're going to have a breeze of a time going into the lighter stages of the round. But I think Prince are going to try and play as safe as they can. We will start to see the, the hunt start. Always gets his kill. That's all he needed. Like I mentioned before, if you can get it, just get a kill, it's going to help you out a ton. That's one less player that can maybe go for a backstab, can maybe play this angle on a hatch. Doesn't get one of the more, I'd say, you know, utility focused operators. You know, Rykos is there to hunt the roamers. He's been hunted himself. But as long as they still have, you know, you hear a band of your buck in there, you're still looking okay. Electro sensor active. Got Solace gaining a little bit of information here. Joystick knows that a drone is going upstairs. It's not crucial information for him at the moment. He's more oh, interested really? in who's going to be coming through the hatch. Demo is at a light bulb moment. Yeah, they, they've eliminated a player on the roam. That means the uh, the phone is up for grabs for Dokumi. Now they're in the Valkyrie cameras. I do love a Valkyrie camera hack. This is going to give them a little bit of info and at least point out the location of the Valkyrie cameras. If they're useless to you, you may as well get rid of them because it could give something away for the attackers. We do have one there. They have a blue flank. Top of Adam's stairs and... Well, instead of using it as a blue... I mean, you saw that well, and thought blue flank. Nako saw that and thought, I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah, I, they see that as ways we could get flanked. Yeah. So, I mean, it's each to their own, isn't it? Is it a glass half full or is it half empty? I mean, it's really a... It's quite a philosophical matter, really. But nonetheless, it's now forcing AQ to sit around lounge a little bit because he's worried about maybe getting flanked up blue. But, jokes aside, the rest of his team are going to be looking to frame up for a good old-fashioned kitchen dirt. They have the kitchen hatch open. They've got a little bit of the fire already dissipating there from those Vulcan canisters. And... It's going to be led by the book, although he's immediately sat down by Shepard. The skeleton key, no match for the TCSG at those sort of ranges, but a nice quick swing is going to do the job. Jack's able to revive his teammates as well. So we've still got two players pushing down this dirt tunnel, but with only 15 seconds remaining, it isn't a great deal of time. Canister pops, headshot found, diffuser in the hands of Skies. Is it going to get put down? No, it won't need to be. Skies actually picks up the final kill there. Ents. Look very pleased with himself on that one. A cracking execute demo. Brilliant execute. You know, the confidence just oozing out of this team. You look at the way they've attacked that. They all said, right, we're all going to push in at this exact point. You're going to get this guy. I'm going to get this guy. He's going to get that guy. And they all said, okay, let's do it. Three, two, one. And they all just push in. And it looks so clean. You know, a great staple of an attack in that basement. VP, just no bite whatsoever. You know, it, the bear is still injured. It's probably it's probably even injured. Probably lost a leg now. Is the bear caught in a frost map? It's no, it's fighting against a kraken. If we're going off mascots. <laughs> yeah, well, bear, bear fighting a kraken. That's not fair. Bears are pretty good in the water, though, aren't they? Not against the kraken. <laughs> All I think of when that is, I think of release the kraken. I think it's oh, like yeah, one of these of old like. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of these old films. Clash or is the it pronounced Kraken? Kraken? That's an interesting one. Any any sort of yeah, meaning behind know. the pronunciation or? Set on Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, really? Yeah. Five seconds to go. I didn't hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, at any rate, Ents sitting and very pretty here. They have a three round buffer to try and get the job done. VP. Is this the ace in the hole that they need? They have drawn for the CCTV and cash bomb site. They haven't gone here yet. They've lost in the basement twice. They've lost inside a gym and bedroom once. Maybe this is going to be enough. I'm not too sure. I mean, Ence's lineup, it's not too utility focused. You don't really have any of the big players uh, that you'd, you know, you'd usually see, like your Monty or your Grim that you, you typically see whenever you head in towards the top floor. Um, a lot more of a standard, you know, lineup. Uh, in terms of VP, they're not looking to hold in towards garage, it doesn't look like. So, should be pretty easy, I think, for Ents to get themselves in there and start establishing some form of a foothold. I've got one guy, but again, there's nothing really there for him. You know, it's just always by himself. Might have a Banshee in the staircase, but that's really it. Should be light work for Ents as long as they can just pressure well, use the flashbangs. 
But maybe it's not really interested in that as they have also taken control of the construction side of things and the bomb they can get the Maverick into Attackers maybe try and open up the single wall. Dan's got a line up. He has got a line up. Is he going to get the kill from it though? Is he going to toss it? He's waiting for the Maverick to start and there it goes. And there it goes, Nako. This is what I mean with the Maverick. That's unfortunate it's, it's for Nako. Just, oh. I mean, we heard that C4 get ripped and... Obviously, we, we, we may get slightly different sound through this, but I'm surprised that Naku didn't see that C, didn't hear that C4 rip. Sorry, um, a little bit unfortunate. I think that that was a case of Ents just sort of seeing what was free and taking it, um, not sort of deviating away from the plan because it's still very standard to get construction open as well. But the garage door still closed, and you've not got much of a presence there. You know, there's an argument to say that they, they could have taken Garage a little bit quicker. It looks as though Azox is really waiting for a bit of information here. Always is still in the bottom, but the info comes through and it is correct. Jax as well is going to double down. Joystick, he's going to be down below. Shepard finds one with a C4. That's the second C4 kill in this round. BP, they haven't had a kill with a gun yet here. They're doing all the hard work with the explosives. Dan, just repositioned slightly, but look at the floor. It is open underneath of him. And all that needs to happen is someone needs to come in below. And that someone could just be Azox. He's going to start to try and pressure this, but he's not accounted for Joystick. Joystick still below there and still able to assist Dan in staying alive. Really struggling with opening that wall. That is where Ents have fallen short. Shepard just unloads the magazine, but how on earth has he lost that? Ents! Oh, it's a cruel game. Seeds, they've just pulled it out of nowhere. Pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Pulled the bear out of the hat. As ends have toppled yet again. Another EU giant. Unbelievable performance there from Ends. You can see what it means on the faces of these players. They are very happy with that result there. This is a team, don't forget, Vertis Pro, third place to invite this year. They are a fantastic squad, a very experienced side, and they've just been taken apart on Clubhouse by Ents. I mean, sometimes you need a little bit of luck to go your way. I think Shepard was maybe a bit unlucky there in that final exchange, the CCSG. I think he probably should have got the kill there, but he's obviously missed a couple of shots along the way. Not really the close game that we were looking for demo. The first half was fairly close, but I mean, in the end, it was convincing from my point of view. We're going to throw this one back over to the desk and they are going to break it down. Thanks so much, Oli and Demo. And another 7-3 for Ents against another big team in Europe League. How are they doing it? This kind of magic coming from them. It's pretty simple. They actually found themselves. We spoke about it. They spoke about it. Everybody spoke about it, and now they have found themselves and how they want to play the game. And they're just going out there, and they seem to be really enjoying it. One thing I pay attention to a lot is player camps, because I know how much the physical language, like the body language, plays into this game. Mm -hmm. And they're constantly looking happy, looking hyped. And whenever they win a round, it's very much celebration. I didn't see so much of that from them before. I think that, again, there's been a very clear change of keeping it simple in terms of the strategy, keeping yeah. it simple in terms of the operators. If you don't do anything like unnecessary or too complex, just focus on playing together. They got a free free split on the defense, which some would say is kind of arguably, you know, not the best. However, that's probably very comfortable attacking this map. So I would say that's okay against that bro. And then obviously they blew them away on the attack. I think, you know, Ent have found themselves, but they've stopped making the stupid mistakes. They've given themselves a chance to win the round. And confidence is such a beautiful thing in terms of Rainbow Six Siege. And I think the confidence has allowed them to make the plays, to take those 50-50s, but win those 50-50s as well. And, and they're starting to get that momentum yeah. rolling. I think that half of the mistakes they were committing before, or even more, was just because they didn't believe in themselves. Yeah. Because when you always sit there and have a second doubt in your mind, it's like, should I be doing this? Maybe not. Maybe I should play it safe. Yeah, I should probably not do that. Then you're basically shutting yourself down. Yeah, sure. You need to have some sort of resemblance. Like, should yep. I be doing this play? But if you decide to do it, you do it. You don't think it twice. And that's what I think that they were doing a lot before. We've got to mention also that, you know, we, we talked about it a lot at the start of the season about how they are playing with a six-man roster. They will have been trying to find the best five. Yep. Have they found it? I, I suppose on the balance of results, you would have to say yeah. at the minute, yes because this is a five that's producing the results. And I think maybe that played into some of the early, early play days, a bit of doubt about, oh, I could get replaced or whatever else that was going on with that six man roster. Um, I would assume we're gonna see till the end of the season, this five that you can see here. How do you replace someone after they beat BDS 
and virtual. And VP, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the really impressive thing as well, right? Considering that this roster, as they currently stand, haven't been together all that long, and their executes and their teamwork seem to be that good that they can take down these massive teams in Europe. Yeah, I mean, they only have one really new player, so other than that, they have been a apart for a long time, but it's just that they've changed up what they're doing. That's yeah. the biggest thing, because they looked worried, they looked scared, they looked poor, and now they look like a team that you don't want to fight against, mostly because, well, they have the individual confidence, they're taking the fights, and they're winning their fights. It comes down to that kind of simple thing of, like, even a bad plan executed together yeah. ends up being a good plan, and I think they were trying to come up with the best solutions, but executing it really poorly. Now they're just executing what they want to execute in a really simple, clean manner together, and that's the results they're finding. I think we said when VP make mistakes, Ents don't want to be around making their own mistakes. They want it to keep it simple, keep it tight, and then capitalize on VP's mistakes. Exactly what they do. Just allow the players to be themselves. Yep. Now, we haven't had all of our teams play in this evening, but I think if we had a look at the standings, Ents and their fans would probably like to freeze this one um, coming in here. Third. Yeah, third place for Ents, and it's mad how, like, two play days, like you say, not all the play days are done yet in terms of today, but. Ents are putting themselves in the mix. They are only currently one point from second place. Huge for them, I think, for a team that many people would have predicted to be in the bottom three, especially for the three that drop out. They're in the playoff race now. And for Vertus Pro, they're very, very far away. And especially even if they get to the playoffs, the way it's looking right now, it's going to be in those lower seeding places. So that was a huge game for the standings in where it was going to put the two teams, especially if Ents came out on top, which they did. We, of course, have a winner's interview lined up now as well. We're able to speak to a player from Ents to ask them a few questions about how to experience this game. And we should have Nico on the line. Good evening. You pick up six points this week. That must feel absolutely amazing. Uh, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, of course, I'm feeling amazing with the six points. So I have a question because this obviously this week has been a massive weight of your guys' shoulder. You guys can finally show everybody who's watching EUL and Ensis fans what you guys really know how to do. And the new playstyle you guys have, just tell us, how does it feel for you guys to just being able to be yourselves again? Uh, it feels feel just amazing. We got our confidence back, I think. We're starting to get some points. Yeah, it just feels amazing. Getting back to our re re real level. Yeah, you guys should be really proud of yourselves. I, for sure, am proud of you because it's such a monumental step up. You guys have been doing amazing. The map, Clubhouse, obviously you played it in your first play day. That did not look good. You guys did not look like yourselves. Was this map and taking Virtus Pro, you never take the Russians to Clubhouse, was this about sending a message? Uh, not really sending a message, but we knew we were going to play club. So it was fine for us. We knew that on the first play day, we just yeah, we weren't ourselves, so we knew that we could just win against uh, Virtus Pro, so it was fine for us. Awesome, thank you very much. Now, we know that this is your first year in Europe League. How does it feel to be in Europe League finally? I mean, how is it different from, for example, Tier 2, and how does it feel to finally make it to this point? Uh, it feels amazing. First, we have uh, support from the org. Thank you to Ents and all the staff. Like, we have uh, financial support. It's uh, something really great. And yeah, finally being in Tier 1. Uh, the big difference for us yeah, is probably just the support from the org. But uh, yeah, we're happy. <laughs> Sounds great. Awesome. Lovely to hear that. Well, thank you so much for your time, Nico. Go and enjoy the rest of the evening. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Good evening, guys. Bye-bye. Very happy to hear that. He seemed really yeah. happy, of course. I mean, just look at how he relaxed he is. That's what we've been talking about. It's like they've been here forever. Yeah. And that's just the way it needs to be. Surprising after only having been in Europe League for a very short time, but we're halfway through our evening. We'll go for a quick break and then we're right back with you.